1990, the Sega Mega Drive. In Europe and Australia anyway. Japan got theirs in 1988, and the Genesis came out in North America in 1989. AV Intelligent Terminal. High-grade multi-purpose use. 16-bit. The first console I ever got to play for any length of time was my cousin's Mega Drive. I mostly remember playing Sonic games, and I loved playing Castle Illusion. Pretty sure I played Streets of Rage as well. I remember something that I thought was called Street Fighter, which was a side-scrolling beat-em-up, which obviously wasn't Street Fighter. He also had a Mega CD, which allows the Mega Drive to play CD games. This thing came out in 1993, so it must have been after that. It fits together like this. It connects to the Mega Drive through the side. So I played a bunch of Sonic CD too. This is the North American version. I don't have the Australian one. Needless to say, I wanted a Mega Drive. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but this is what my mum bought for me. Europe and Australia got the Super Nintendo in 1992. Japan got the Super Famicom in 1990. North America got the Super Nintendo in 1991. These two were the biggest names in video games at the time, so I don't actually think I was disappointed. It just wasn't really what I was expecting. I have great memories of playing Super Mario All-Stars, but in the end I convinced my mum we should trade the Super Nintendo in and buy a Mega Drive. Now I was happy. I got Sonic, Sonic 2, Fantasia, that game is stupidly hard, Columns, that was fake Tetris, that was good. I remember playing Golden Axe, but I don't recognise this cover art, so I don't know if I had that. Altered Beast was great. Echo the Dolphin. In the 90s, there were video shops. They mostly hired out VHS tapes of movies, but uh, you could also hire games. This one was four bucks for a week. I've never heard of Video Busters, though. I used to hire games pretty frequently, so my memory of what I actually owned and what I just hired a lot is kind of fuzzy sometimes. I remember hiring Sonic and Knuckles, which is a weird one. Sonic 3. Virtual Pinball is one that I hired, but all was not good with my Mega Drive. In the 90s, our TVs didn't have AV ports, so I couldn't use this port. Didn't even know what it did. We had to use these, RF output. Mine was dodgy. I had to wiggle the plug in just the right way to make the picture come up on the screen. Far too often, I was trying to play like this, and then it would just randomly drop out. This is not a fun experience. I started to miss my Super Nintendo. So I'm not sure exactly what order things happened in, but we gave the Sega Mega Drive to a friend's dad who was an electrician and he was gonna try and fix it. Knowing what I know now, most electricians aren't really suited to fixing electronics and we never saw it again. I did end up getting another Super Nintendo and I never looked back, at least not until I was a little bit older. This time it came with Donkey Kong Country 2, which is an amazing game. I reckon this game still holds up. You should definitely try it if you haven't. SimCity, which is quite dated now. Super Pinball, which was okay at the time. I got a Super Game Boy. This, this thing was so cool. It meant I could play my Game Boy games on the TV. I also hired lots of games on the Super Nintendo. Rock and Roll Racing was excellent. Um, it's it's pretty good today still, I guess. Krusty's Funhouse, where you have to kill all the mice. Super Mario Kart, um, self-explanatory. Virtual Bart, which creeped me out a lot and I didn't hire it again. And The Legend of Zelda, which I loved but probably didn't understand. Plus probably hired heaps of other games. Actually Revolution 8, so that was really good. So the Super Nintendo was accidentally my first console and still holds my fondest memories. <laughs> <laughs>